Hi guys and welcome back to another tutorial here on the channel. I decided to make this one this morning very randomly after releasing uh, the Batsum tutorial yesterday because I figured it might add some extra context for those of you who are not pilots and have uh, kind of no idea how uh, instrument flight rules work. I wanted to take you through a general sort of hypothetical flight plan I made from uh, JFK in New York to Los Angeles and kind of show you the radio communications and how they would generally work on VATSIM. Now, obviously, this is a very general description of the procedures and the phraseology, and the intent for you is to not necessarily take away what I'm saying and, and copy it, but more so use it as a sort of a tool, as first principles, to be able to then deal with any sort of situation on any sort of flight that you set up on VATSIM. So here you can see that I've set up a flight from JFK to LAX, as you can see, and this is um, my Navigraph subscription that I have. I fully recommend it if you're able to afford it. It's uh, less than $10 a month, and it adds a lot of extra value and uh, immersion to your simulation experience. But here you can see I filed this plan from JFK to LAX, and we're gonna go through the hypothetical scenarios in terms of getting our IFR clearance, you know, requesting taxi, uh, departing out of New York, and uh, the en route procedures in terms of going from center to center, and then the arrival into LAX, and I'm going to be uh, putting on the air traffic control hat and the pilot hat at the same time and kind of recording uh, samples for you guys to take you through, and uh, I hope this helps. So, as, as always, if it does help, don't forget to uh, click that like button and subscribe to the channel. Thank you, guys. Now, if you guys haven't watched the VATSIM tutorial on Simple Takeoffs, I fully recommend you go back and watch that one first, which is linked in the description, and then come back to this tutorial because you're going to need to know how to connect to VATSIM and where to launch, and I cover all that in that tutorial. But assuming you've watched that, uh, you've made a flight now from JFK to LAX, you always uh, spawn on a gate or a stand. So in this case, uh, if you want to be realistic about it, um, you know, you, you choose the correct terminal. Uh, if it's international flight, you choose the international terminal, you know, if sometimes uh, domestic flights go to their own terminal. But in any event, uh, to, to simplify things here, I've chosen the international terminal, even though I'm going to LAX just because it's the biggest one and it's easy to uh, demonstrate where, where we're going to be taxiing from. So uh, I'm going to launch at gate 33 in this case. So let me just show you the gates right here at the international terminal. Um, this is gate 33. So I'm going to go ahead and tune the frequency uh, of New York clearance delivery or New York tower or approach or center according to which one's online. Because as we said, Batsim has a top down approach where, uh, you know, center can do everybody else under them, their work, but it's not the other way around. So for example, ground who does the taxi instructions and, uh, and whatnot cannot do the, the, the work of tower and center so you always pick the highest one that's available um, unless there is a lower position, a quote-unquote lower position like tower or ground and that will suit your needs uh, more accurately so in this case assume uh, clearance delivery for New York is online so I'm gonna tune in that frequency and I'm gonna say something to the effect of uh, New York clearance delivery, good afternoon, Air Canada, 24-8, gate 33, type A320neo, request IFR clearance to Los Angeles with information Bravo. And they might come back and say something like, Air Canada, 24-8, New York clearance delivery, good afternoon, cleared to Los Angeles via the score 4 departure, Yankee transition, direct Merca, then is filed, climb and maintain 5000, expect flight level 24010 minutes after departure, departure frequency 135.9, Squawk 6282. And I'm just editing this part in real quick because uh, from Merca, we were supposed to be told to get on the Quebec 430 uh, IFR route to the Robbinsville uh, VOR, the Romeo Bravo Victor uh, VOR that you see on the bottom left of the screenshot here. And 
that will basically uh, have us join our original f uh, flight plan that we filed. So the total amendment would be from JFK, we'll take the score for our nav departure to the Yankee the transition to Merca. And the part that I left out was we were supposed to hop on the Quebec 430 to the Robbinsville VOR. So there it is, guys. And then as the pilot, it's your job to read that back. So you'll say something like, Air Canada 248 cleared to LA via the S score 4 departure, Yankee transition, direct Merca, then as filed, climb and maintain 5000, expect flight level 24010 minutes after, departure frequency 135 decimal niner, squawk 6282. And he'll say, Air Canada 248, read back correct, advise uh, ready taxi. And you say, advise ready taxi, Air Canada 248. And at that point, you would contact ground when you're ready to taxi. Now notice in this case, our original flight plan that we filed through SimBrief had us going uh, direct from JFK to the Romeo Bravo Victor VOR. Uh, there was no standard instrument departure planned in, in our file, in our uh, plan that we filed. However, air traffic control in this case did give us uh, a standard instrument departure. They gave us the score for departure uh, which is basically a standard routing that we follow uh, from the runway 31 right in this case out of New York and they gave us Yankee transition which is the first sort of uh, waypoint or the last waypoint uh, associated with the standard instrument departure and then from there they want us to go direct to this waypoint Merca and Dennis filed so they've amended our initial route and that's very normal in real life because uh, due to traffic and different uh, factors that we don't consider as pilots, um, air traffic control has to take all of that into account and they might amend our initial routing uh, in the vicinity of the airport until um, you know they get us to a point where they can have us join our or original uh, flight plan. That's why, that's why they say then as filed. Um, in this case, they've kind of given us a, a big change that, you know, I've, I've made it a difficult scenario. And um, usually it's not uh, it's not this difficult on VATSIM. For example, if you're uh, given a direct to a certain VOR upon departure, they don't usually add the SID to it. But I wanted to make it a little more complex to a demonstrator point. So in this case, you can see that this is how our flight plan has been amended. So we're going to take uh, we're going to incorporate the score for uh, standard instrument departure into our uh, MCDU in the Airbus and we're going to program that we're going to select the Yankee transition we're going to um, select the Merca waypoint and then um, uh, everything else from there will be as filed in our flight plan now when you're ready for push and start you tune the frequency for ground and if ground's not available you uh, contact tower and center if tower is not available etc according to the top-down approach in Vatsim. so pretend in our case ground is available so we'll call up ground and say mm -hmm. New York ground Air Canada 24 8 ready push and start so what they'll come back and say is they'll basically tell you uh, which way to face the aircraft when you push and start so they'll say uh, Air Canada 24 8 push and start approved uh, tail facing south contact uh, ready advise ready taxi and you'll say uh, tail facing south, advise ready taxi Air Canada 24-8. So what that means is they want you to push back and have your tail facing to the south. They could also say, you know, um, the front of the aircraft, can the nose facing north, whatever. Um, but in that case, they're setting you up for a taxi to runway 31 right. And when you're ready to taxi, you call up ground. And uh, if ground is not available, obviously you call up uh, tower. If tower is not available, you call up center. Um, and if no one's available, actually, you go on the Unicom frequency 122.8, which is the sort of shared frequency between everyone on VATSIM where pilots self-report their position. But in this case, pretend everyone's online. So we're going to call up ground and we're going to say uh, near ground, Air Canada 248, ready taxi IFR with information Bravo. So you usually include the ATIS information that you have in your transmission for your taxi radio call. So they know that you have the latest weather when you're ready to, to yeah, ready to depart. Uh, and then the ground controller will come back and tell you something like Air Canada 248, taxi and hold short runway 31 right via Gulf, cross runway 22 right, Yankee, Yankee Alpha. And you'll have to read that back. Taxi and hold short runway 31 right via Gulf, cross runway 22 right, Yankee, Yankee Alpha, Air Canada 24 right. Now at this point, you usually uh, ask to 
monitor tower frequency as you're taxiing. So you switch over to tower if they're online, and you know, as usual, a center if tower's not online, etc. And when you taxi, you get to the hold short line for runway three one right, and um, you basically give it a couple seconds. And if the controller doesn't get back to you, you you call them up and say, Air Canada twenty four right, holding short runway three one right, ready IFR departure, and you know they'll tell you uh, either. Uh, Air Canada 24 right, winds 240 at 10 zero, gusting 12, clear for takeoff, runway 31 right, or you know, they'll tell you to line up and wait. So in either case, you repeat back that transmission. So say, uh, pretend they told us, uh, they gave us the takeoff clearance. So we'll just say, clear for takeoff, 31 right, Air Canada 24 right. Now, one thing I wanted to mention is since we're given a standard instrument departure, which is an RNAV uh, standard instrument departure, which is like basically working on GPS, uh, there's no radar vector by ATC. So uh, if they want you to basically follow that SID directly out of the runway and to the first waypoint, which is SCORE, um, you know, be it, this being called the SCORE SID, uh, the SCORE departure, uh, they might give you that in the radio transmission for your takeoff clearance. So they might say RNAV score cleared for takeoff runway 31 right. Uh, so make sure to repeat that instruction in your readback. So say clear for takeoff 31 right RNAV score Air Canada 24 right. And uh, if you know, in some cases, you might be given uh, radar vectors out of departure because uh, the standard instrument departure is such that they vector you around and then have you join the first. Uh, sort of waypoint uh, on your plan so in that case they'll say something like fly runway heading clear for takeoff runway 31 right and you'll repeat that you'll say fly runway heading 31 right air canada 24 right clear for takeoff so yeah uh, you get the point guys different different uh, standard instrument departures and different procedures you just have to basically always read it back so once you've uh, taken off uh, as you start to exit the control zone around the uh, airport that is basically under the control of the tower they'll have you uh, switch over to departure so that's when you, they usually say it can 24 8 contact departure now 135.9 or good eight and you read that back say over to departure 135 the small niner I can 24 8 good eight and you switch over your uh, frequency to departure and you always tell them who you are where you are and or in, in some instances what your request is but in this case we're just going to tell our position and and wait for the instructions so we'll, we'll contact uh, departure and say near departure hello air canada 24 8 passing 2000 for 5000 rnav score so in this case you're telling them that you're on the rnav score and you're headed over to the first waypoint and then from there they'll still might uh, tell you i can 24 8 proceed on course which just which just means call, continue following the standard instrument departure or they might you know give you uh, a shortcut direct to another waypoint so they might say air canada 24 8 direct uh yankee and you say direct yankee air canada 24 8 so in that case they have us uh bypassing this uh Charlie Echo Sierra India Delta Waypoint and, and Direct Yankee and you know eventually they'll have us proceed on course and from there it's pretty standard uh, they continue ATC continues to give you uh, levels up in terms of your climb you know depending on the traffic around you might just be cleared to your final cruising altitude and they'll basically have you transfer your frequency over on your radio from center to center as you make your way over to the different sectors across the country and when you get close to Los Angeles, you basically contact approach if they're online and, you know, center if, if approach is not online, the top down. And you say something like SoCal approach, good evening, Air Canada 24-8 passing 10,000 for 8,000 with information x-ray. And they'll say Air Canada 24-8, SoCal approach, good evening, descend and maintain 3,000. And you say descend and maintain 3,000, Air Canada 24-8. You read back the instructions and basically uh, they will bring you over to the final approach fix where you can uh, shoot your ILS approach. And uh, I know I kind of skipped over a lot of things there, but basically in terms of the radio communication, picture it as no different than how you departed JFK, except now on the radios you're implementing your standard terminal arrival uh, route, which in our case for my flight plan here is the Angel 4 arrival. So, uh, you know, when you're on the on route portion 
uh, you contact ATC when you're ready for your descent and you say Air Canada 24 8 ready request descent and uh, they'll tell you descent and maintain you know f whatever flight level 230 and expect the Angel 4 arrival and uh, you know that's when you will be first told a confirmation of the arrival standard terminal arrival uh, route that you have in your MCDU and uh, hopefully they won't change it on you but um, if they do give you another star, then you just be, simply go to your uh, flight management computer or MCDO, depending on what aircraft you're flying. So in my case, I would go to the Airbus and I would uh, re-enter the, the new standard terminal arrival that I've received. But assuming all goes well, you know, 99% of the time they'll continue giving, uh, they'll give you the, the standard terminal arrival route that you filed. So you follow that down uh, onto the vicinity of the, of the airport and that's when you contact the approach and from there you know they'll pass you over to tower when you get uh, established usually on the ILS if you're doing an ILS approach um, and they'll tell you contact tower you know 118 decimal 2 and you say contact over to tower 118 decimal 2 air Canada 248 have yourself a good day and the same thing applies to when you're established on the ILS guys you just contact tower and you say Air Canada, uh, Los Angeles Tower, good evening, Air Canada 248, established ILS 248. And they'll tell you, Air Canada 248, good evening, uh, continue approach, or something like that. And Or they can tell you, Air Canada 248, uh, winds 230 at 10, clear to land, 24 right. And you say, clear to land, 24 right, Air Canada 248. And once you land, you contact, uh, the tower passes you over to ground, and you contact ground and say, uh, LA ground, good evening, Air Canada 248, uh, cleared runway 24 right on Charlie. So you tell them your position and they'll tell you good evening, taxi, gate, whatever, uh, Bravo, X ray, whatever. So, and usually uh, you got to let them know what uh, gate you want to go to according to your flight and you know how realistic you want to be with the position of where you park the aircraft and you know whether it's international terminal or. or uh, domestic terminal so I know I kind of flew through that but the like I said in the beginning the point of this video was not to not to kind of spoon feed you every little different scenario because there is a thousand you know million different ways this can play out I wanted to give you the sort of first principles uh, of the basic foundations of how you, you kind of wrap your mind around uh, uh, communications with ATC and if you can kind of get that general idea in your head that you always just tell them who you are what your request is or what your position is depending on the situation and you just read back the instructions I think uh, everything else is just a matter of you guys going through the growing pains and you know going through the learning process and and uh, and learning that way uh, through time so if you guys like this video and found it helpful don't forget to uh, click that like button and give me a subscribe for a lot more take care guys